welcome to another weekly bulletin of engineering information from the IBA. The interfacing of domestic video products. We highlight the increasing problems and some solutions. On the radio front, a new relay for Orchard FM near Yeovil and in community radio for London on VHF, Melody Radio. We've the week's roundup of special announcements and details of just one new television relay, Redbrook in Gloucestershire. Until a few years ago, the television set was used as a self-contained unit. The only external electrical connections were the aerial socket and the mains plug, and the only sources of pictures were terrestrial off-air transmissions. How things have changed. There came the video recorder, video games, the home computer, view data, video disc players, and now satellite receivers. The television set has become the centre of a whole range of home entertainment units. And it's hardly surprising that connecting them all together can be a nightmare. In fairly simple systems consisting of a VCR and perhaps a single satellite receiver, the traditional approach of interfacing on or around channel 36 usually works quite well. This also has the advantage of being able to feed everything to additional TV sets around the house. But depending on where you live and which channels contain broadcast transmissions, this daisy chaining at RF can be fraught. Either there's patterning on the satellite or VCR playback channels, or these units can interfere with reception of the normal off-air terrestrial programs. A greater range of adjustment on built-in modulators would help considerably. But there are more problems. The possibility of a fifth UHF channel using channels 35 and 37 will cut down even more the options for RF interfacing. And as far as BSB receivers are concerned, the improved pictures and digital stereo sound from the MAC format will only be obtained by making the appropriate baseband connections. No doubt within a few years, integrated television sets and VCRs will become available with all the necessary tuners, decoders and interconnections built in. In the meantime, though, careful use of baseband interconnection will be the only really successful way of coping with the problem. Fortunately, we have the European standard Perry Television or SCART connector to do this. The SCART system uses a special 20-core multi-way cable plus an overall screen. It allows for stereo audio inputs and outputs, PAL video in and out, and, increasingly important, three pins for RGB signals with independent earth returns. There are also pins for blanking and function switching signals and two pins allocated for control data. If all items of equipment have one SCART socket, then interconnections begin to get easier. But in order to achieve a fairly complex system with, say, a VCR and two satellite receivers, there will need to be some switching units, especially for video recording, to be independent of live viewing. Having at least two SCART sockets on each piece of equipment would be very helpful for this sort of problem. Even then, there are pitfalls for the unwary. The recent arrival of BSB receivers with their RGB and PAL video outputs has shown that merely connecting up to view with a SCART lead could leave you watching the PAL version, rather than the preferred RGB output. First of all, you need to use a SCART lead with all the pins connected. Some cheaper and thinner leads provide only the basic audio and video connections. Pin 8 needs a control voltage to force the TV set to select external video, rather than its own tuner and pin 16 needs the appropriate voltage to select the RGB pins instead of composite PAL. Any switching boxes need to cater for these pins, and some early TV sets with SCOTs do not even provide the RGB video input connections at all. The pair of pins allocated for control data may also prove to be important in the fairly near future, and should be catered for in any switching boxes. Imagine the problems of using four or five separate remote control handsets, or the need for a VCR to instruct a satellite receiver to change channels during an unattended recording. The solution lies in the domestic digital bus, which is currently being hammered into an agreed technical standard. 
it would allow a single remote control unit to send commands not just to the TV set, but to any and between any of the other pieces of equipment connected to it. There's just one further complication. Super VHS and 8mm video equipment uses a special 4-pin S connector for its output. These outputs are not RGB, but YC, luminance and separate modulated chrominance. To solve the problem for sets not fitted with an S connector, there are moves afoot to agree standard pin connections for feeding YC signals in via SCART sockets with the necessary control voltage to instruct the TV set to switch in the appropriate decoding circuitry. Unfortunately, there's no legislation in this country to compel television set manufacturers to fit peri-television sockets at all. But they are becoming increasingly important for baseband interconnections and essential for getting improved picture quality from Mac transmissions. This week's transmitter news now, starting again in Lancashire, where ITV and Channel 4 are continuing on reduced power during aerial replacement work. In central Scotland, all four services from Black Hill are liable to periods of reduced power from 9am to 5.45pm until Friday, also for aerial replacement work. In Bedfordshire, Anglia ITV from Sandy Heath is liable to daytime reduced power each day this week for re-engineering work. The Slapton Relay in South Devon is scheduled to be off between 6 and midday on three mornings this week for work on the aerial cylinder. In East Sussex, TVS and Channel 4 from Hastings and Hastings Old Town, as well as Southern Sound on 97.5 MHz, will be off the air from 10 to 10.30 this morning for electrical re-engineering work. And in Gwent, the Monmouth Relay will be off the air today from 8am to 5pm for maintenance by the local electricity board. The Colebrookdale Relay in Shropshire is scheduled to be off this morning from 6.30 until 12.30 for a BBC aerial overhaul. And BBC aerial work is also taking place at the Ironbridge Relay, a couple of miles away at the same time, on Wednesday. In the Shetlands, Bolter Sound is due off tomorrow between 10am and 4pm for electricity board maintenance. In Norfolk, tomorrow and Thursday, ITV and Channel 4 from Tackleston and its relays will be liable to several short interruptions for repair work on the combining unit. Also on Thursday, ITV and Channel 4 from the Rygate and Dorking relays will be off from 10 until 10.30am for electrical work. On Thursday or Friday, the Arvon, Llandechwin, Festiniog, Weinvaer and Llanengen relays in Snowdonia will be off between 9.30 and 10.30 a.m. for a weather-dependent mast lamp change. On Friday morning, the Wollacoom relay near Ilfracoom will be off between half past nine and half past ten for an IBA electrical inspection. Finally, looking ahead to next week, when the St Thomas Relay in Exeter will be switched off from 6 until midday on three mornings between Monday and Friday in order to carry out work on the aerial cylinder. Moving on to independent local radio and a new relay for Orchard FM is now on the air on 97.1 MHz with mixed polarisation from Cheedington, about four miles to the southeast of Crewe Kern. There are no immediate plans for split programming, but this relay will extend Orchard FM to areas not previously covered by their Mendip transmitter on 102.6. The new relay will serve Yeovil, Sherbourne, parts of Ilminster, Crewe Kern, Broad Windsor and the outskirts of Lyme Regis and Bridport. Programs began last Friday but are liable to interruptions for engineering work for the rest of this week. Incremental Radio now, and for London, Melody Radio, on test on 104.9 MHz, vertically polarised from Croydon. This station plans to broadcast melodic, easily listening music, with regular news and essential information for the Greater London area, with a potential audience of just under 10 million. Programmes are scheduled to begin on the 9th of July. And there are still another five incremental stations planned for this year. Radio West in Lothian, KISS FM for London, in Coventry Radio Harmony, Weir FM in Sunderland 
and North East Essex Community Radio. More details when firm dates are known. Television relays next, and in Gloucestershire, a new station for Redbrook is now on the air. It are about 320 people, most of whom have been depending on a self-help active deflector. Others have been receiving very poor signals from Ridge Hill or Clearwell. HTV West is on Channel 42 and Channel 4 on 52. Group B aerials are required, vertically polarised. That's Redbrook on the England-Wales border, southeast of Monmouth, now on the air. And that's all for this. If you have any technical queries on independent broadcasting, our address, Engineering Information, Independent Broadcasting Authority, Crawley Court, Winchester, Hampshire, SO 2122QA. Our telephone number is Winchester, that's 0962 822444. Office hours are 8.30 to 4.30. At other times there's an answering machine. We hope you'll set your VCRs for next 5.45. But in the meantime, from Adrian Good and from me, Maureen Nicholson, goodbye from Crawley Court.